The goal of a functional evaluation exam is to determine and establish an individual's functional ability. Our test is actually a series of several different exams that test different aspects of function combined into one report. By isolating each component on function, you'll get a complete picture of where the functional loss is, which component is the main cause of injury, and as a result, be able to plan the best course of action to return the individual to full function as quickly as possible. This is Emma. Emma's complaining of neck pain which radiates into her right shoulder. Let's see how our functional evaluation can help Emma get back to health quickly. The first step is to test Emma's range of motion. The range of motion test reveals the abilities and inabilities of a particular joint to move. By measuring all the body planes associated with the joints involved, you can tell which is preventing an individual from completing their daily activities. When we look at the results of Emma's range of motion study, we discover that she has a decrease at the cervical spine in flexion, extension, right lateral flexion, and right rotation. The next test we focus on is muscle strength testing. The goal of the muscle testing portion of our exam is to correlate muscle function loss to the individual's ability to move. By testing both left and right side, we can compare the differences between the opposing sides, how muscles are functioning overall, and how the correlating nerves and nerve roots are affected. After muscle testing our patient, we discover that she has weaknesses in every muscle on the right-hand side. However, since only elbow flexion and shoulder abduction were impaired by more than 12.5%, they are the only two considered clinically significant. While the other areas may be painful, they are secondary to the cause of the injury. This ability to isolate strength to a fraction of a percent is a perfect example how unlike in a regular physical exam, our test can quickly cut through extraneous findings to determine the direct cause of injury. A good hand grip is vital to many different activities in daily life. Everything from carrying objects to a good handshake depends on good grip. When we test grip strength, we test all five positions, not just the standard position that's required by the AMA. By testing all five positions, we can evaluate whether a full effort was given by the individual being tested. If a patient is strongest at position two or three, we know that the individual gave a maximal voluntary effort, and these results can easily be seen in a graph in the report. Looking at Emma's graph, we see that she did give a full effort. Her data reveals she has a 30% deficit on the right side. This can be caused by weak muscles of the hand, injured nerves, nerve roots, or a combination of all three. The three different types of pinch grip testing, key, tip, and palmer grip, are essential to establishing the dexterity of the hand. This dexterity is associated with activities ranging from holding a pencil to playing a piano. In our patient Emma, we noticed she had weaknesses in key and tip grip, but not in palmer grip. The NIOSH lift is a test of the patient's ability to lift weight both maximally and consistently. We have six different lifts that correlate to different muscle groups in the body. These lifts help differentiate which muscles are associated with the injury and rule out those which are not. The impairment rating is separated into regional and whole body ratings. The regional rating will reveal body-specific impairments. This is beneficial when treating patients as it reveals the areas which are affected the most. With injured patients, it helps to establish approved areas for treatment. The whole person impairment gives a general synopsis of how the injured area affects the person as a whole. By giving both local and whole person impairments, you will get a true picture how the injury is affecting the person. So what does all this information mean to our patient Emma? Let's review. The whole person and local impairments reveal that Emma has a 38% decrease of her ability to perform her activities of daily living. Muscle testing revealed weaknesses in the pronator teres, biceps, supraspinatus, deltoid, and serratus anterior muscles. Grip strength revealed possible problems with hand and forearm musculature, the median, radial, and ulnar nerves, and C6 through C8 nerve roots. Pinch grip revealed weaknesses of the hand intrinsic muscles, the median nerve, and the C6 through C7 nerve root. The decreases in range of motion reflect difficulties in motion specifically on the right side. Looking at the common thread through all this information, it appears that Emma is suffering with a right side C5 and C6 nerve root injury affecting the musculotaneous and median nerves. 
From here, the doctor can create a therapy protocol knowing that it is targeted at the specific cause of the injury and not just chasing symptoms. This results in the patient feeling better much quicker with less chance of recurrence of injury and allowing Emma to get back into life. For more information on how national functional evaluations can help you in your office, please contact us at 1-866-335-4040 or visit our website nationalfe.com.